Navigating the Underground Railroad through a labyrinth of secret signs, obscure landmarks, and hidden markers in search of freedom was an unimaginable hardship, one that most slaves did late at night to avoid capture. Photographer Janine McNabales offers people an idea of what it might have been like in an exhibit currently on view at the Canton Museum of Art. Through darkness to light, photographs along the Underground Railroad shares images taken at night along some of the routes traveled by men and women who ventured north for a better life. She's trying to give you the perspective of the freedom seekers and what they experienced. I mean, they had to travel at night. Um, it was the safest time to travel, um, safe being the operative word there, but um, it shows you what they were seeing. So, you know, there wasn't light pollution from the cities or any of those things. And so these are really dark images because that's how it would have looked. And if you think of the South and all of the creatures and animals that come into that and just, yeah, that unknown of everything. I mean, it's, yeah, it's an intimidating thought, yeah. She could have told this story from any number of different perspectives. For example, she could have told it from a station master, a conductor. Instead, she decided to tell it through the, the slaves who are escaping for freedom. Why did she decide to tell the, that story from this particular perspective? Most of these freedom seekers, the, the slaves, they weren't getting that much aid along the way, especially in the Deep South. There were very few accounts of slaves from the Deep South making it to Canada. There were some, but not near as many as, you know, from the Kentucky border, things like that. Um, and many times they were on their own. So when they were standing in these places that you see in the photographs, they were by themselves. Um, and there were station masters, there were station houses, but they were few and far between. So it was really, a lot of times, a solo trip. So how does documenting the story of the Underground Railroad through pictures enable her to tell a different story than what we would read in text? She portrays it in a first-person narrative, first-person perspective, where you really, in looking at the images, you are getting the sense that you're standing where that person stood, especially with the large format images. Um, it's easier to put yourself in that place. Um, you can really sense that kind of fear of the unknown in some of these photos with, um, you know, you're walking into a swamp, the nature in the swamp, um, the fear of being detected, all of those things. So it's really powerful. What prompted Janine McNabale's interest in the story of the Underground Railroad? Um, well, she really has a vested interest in the relationship between history and um, its effect on now. Um, the Underground Railroad project has really been, it was a 14 year project. She started in 2002. This was before the National Underground Railroad Freedom Center in Cincinnati. And so she really focused on um, wanting to draw the comparisons between history and now. She spent a decade researching these routes. How did she go about determining where the spots were that she wanted to photograph, especially given that there's not much historical evidence of what slaves may have taken in terms of routes, where they may have gone, where they may have stopped? There really isn't because there was such a risk in um, documenting that information because if it was found, you risk not only yourself but also the people that you were aiding. Um, and she chose like the 1840s, so everything that she photographed was operating as a station house or could have been in that decade, um, and she kept everything, each image goes about 20 miles apart from each other. So um, history stories say that um, fugitive slaves were escaping, for, or freedom seekers were escaping and going 20 miles per night on their journey. So she tried to keep that much distance between each image that she shot. One of the most haunting photos, I think, is decision to leave. What do we see in this picture? So that is actually a picture of um, slave quarters at the Magnolia Plantation, Louisiana, that still stands as a National Park Service site. Um, and to my understanding, often the slaves would consider leaving, maybe go the next town over for a day or two, but then come back. So what you see in that image is really that last glance back to what they've known as their home, um, and before they decide to leave that to try for a better life. There seems so. to be almost a look over your shoulder. Kind yeah, of. it really is. The, the, the photo seems to communicate to me anyway, like, should I go, should I yeah, not go? Yeah, exactly. The risk of staying versus the, the hope of what could be. In terms of the way she frames her shot, is it fair to say that McNabale seems to point us toward freedom, but it's still elusive, like you feel it over the yeah. edge, but. Yeah, and the later, um, towards the end of the series, uh, the shots of Canada, where you see sunrise, 
you're still seeing Canada across the water. You're not on Canadian soil quite yet. So it is really, it's, it's at least within reach. You can see it. 